Well, good evening and welcome to Tucker Carlson tonight. As you may have heard, over the weekend, a deranged man in the state of Oregon called Jeremy Christian began berating Muslims on a train. And when three men approached to intervene, he stabbed two of them to death. It was an atrocity, but it was only the first of many in this story. Almost immediately after it happened, the press scrambled to define what exactly had happened. Right wing white supremacist commits murder provoked by Trump's climate of hate, or maybe climate of fear, maybe both. Fake civil rights groups like the Center for Islamic Relations and the Southern Poverty Law Center jumped on board immediately, blaming President Trump's rhetoric. He has been very silent. The silence has been deafening in terms of the amount of hate crimes and actual, what I say, white terrorist attacks that have taken place in the United States of America. Mr. Trump's uh, xenophobic, vitriolic campaign, coupled with his attacks on political correctness, have told many people that the gloves are off and that they are uh, uh, allowed, basically, to act on their worst instincts. Many alleged journalists weren't any more restrained than that. The blog Vox called the crime, quote, the latest in a wave of racist attacks across America that followed President Trump's election. The Associated Press chimed in with a piece entitled this, Unease about white supremacy grows after Portland stabbing. President Trump was shamed for taking too long to tweet about the attack. The message was clear. This is what Trump's America looks like. Not one to let a crisis go to waste, the mayor of Portland, Ted Wheeler, used the killings to ban free speech itself, calling for the cancellation of two upcoming political rallies. I'm appealing to the organizers of the alt-right events to cancel the events that they've scheduled. My main concern is that they are coming to peddle a message of hatred and of bigotry. Oh, the very message that caused the murders, except none of this was actually true. The accused killer was not a Trump voter. He actually backed Jill Stein and Bernie Sanders in the 2016 race and indeed called for violent attacks on Trump supporters during the election. A video from the day before the stabbing shows him denouncing not just Muslims, but also Jews and Christians. In a fake Facebook posting from last June, he attacked Hillary Clinton for allegedly keeping Honduran refugees out of this country, hardly the behavior of a coherent white supremacist. At the alt-right rally supposedly attended in April, he was apparently there to pick fights with everyone, whether they loved Trump or hated him. Once you dig a little, you find that this guy wasn't a right-winger, but an unstable maniac who hated almost everybody and maybe inevitably was going to lash out at some point. But don't tell that to the media, though. Like progressives everywhere, they see racists under every bed, even, believe it or not, at Evergreen State College in the state of Washington. Evergreen is one of the most left-wing schools in the Western Hemisphere, but as students have become convinced the place has been infiltrated by bigots. To root them out, progressives there have occupied administration buildings, ordered white people off the campus with the threat of force. Watch this. I'm tired of white people talking about what black and brown people need. You don't know. You and the police. Well, our leaders in Washington fret about Vladimir Putin and his bloggers. This is what's going on in the rest of America. Where are the people in charge exactly? Well, they're abasing themselves before their tormentors, of course. George Bridges, the cringing president of Evergreen, actually thanked the rioters as they screamed at him. He expressed his, quote, gratitude for their, quote, passion and courage in trampling the rights of everyone else. How did we get here exactly? Well, there are a lot of answers to that question, but a main one is this. The left's concerns for equal rights for all has been replaced by the diversity agenda, which is a destructive obsession with race. It trumps free speech, which, which is routinely suppressed in its name. It obviates the rule of law, which aggrieved parties can freely ignore, as you just saw. In the name of tolerance, it demands conformity. Its calls for justice are often an excuse for violence. It is totalitarian, and suddenly it is everywhere. What does this mean for the rest of us?